start the recording. So welcome to our CIS 117 Week 4 Hangout. Uh, I'm John Beck. We've got Antran uh, online as well. And we were just uh, working through one of An's questions before the meeting started. Uh, but now we'll go ahead and get started. So um, on this is really um, uh, the hangout is the student show. I have some things I will be happy to demonstrate. And we looked at one of your questions regarding uh, exercise four. Um, do you have other questions that you'd like us to look at first? Uh, no, that, that was the, where I uh, stopped. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, if, if you stopped with number four, let's, uh, let's pick up there. And then at the end, toward the end of the recording, if we have time, I'll go back and look at the first three. Okay. So, um, so here is assignment question five. And again, what I do is sort of an educational strategy is when I design the, the uh, uh, exercise questions, mm -hmm. I design them to be very parallel to um, one of the uh, chapter book uh, questions. So if you look at the back of chapter five um, for TAL distributors, you'll find exercise 11. And so our exercise says find the ID first and last name of each customer that currently has an order on file for the item titled more songs about structures and comestibles. That's very similar by intent to find the number and name of each customer that currently has an order on file for a rocking horse. Okay. So that, that's our TAL problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, walk us through the solution and I'll add commentary about the, the techniques to uh, solve this problem. And hopefully by seeing that problem solved, people will be able to uh, apply those techniques to their solution of uh, uh, exercise five. And I, I find that kind of a, a more interesting and p less painful way to sit down and listen to a lecture. You can see what it's actually doing that is, is giving you what you need and you get the explanation as you go along. So if that's okay. working for everybody, we'll just continue to follow that pattern. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna copy that actual problem statement right into our query editor so we can see it at the top and comment it out. And then again, I'm working on the TAL distributors database. So I'm going to go ahead and use TAL. And uh, if anyone hasn't, you know, wants to set up the, uh, um, uh, the sample databases, uh, remember in the, the course resources in Moodle, uh, the scripts to build TAL and build uh, uh, colonial uh, tours are out there right where you got the same script that built CIS 117. <laughs> Okay. All right. So um, let's take a look here. Um, let's build this one upside down. So we're going to need to select a whole bunch of fields. Okay. And we'll come back and fill those out in a minute. And uh, um, then we're going to have a from clause, and this is the one that, that's interesting this week because the from clause is going to enumerate all the tables we need to link together uh, to give us the different uh, fields that we want. And so the tables are linked together <coughs> using key, key relationships. So the primary key, the identifying um, uh, element on one table where there's, you know, it's unique in that one table that links, links to possibly many uh, instances of related data. So one order could have, um, you know, many items associated with it. So we'll have, you know, an, an order number that is related to many instances of that order number for, you know, against each item that's a line item for that order. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and look at the interesting part, the from clause here. And so if we, if we analyze the different uh, um, uh, uh, columns that we need, the different attributes, uh, we're going to find that some of those rely, uh, re, uh, reside in the orders table and some of them in the order line table mm -hmm. and some of them in the item table. Okay. And uh, of course, what we're not putting in here, it's not not relevant here, so we're leaving it out. But we couldn't we could put it in if we were if we needed that data as well. Is we're not pulling anything from the customers table. Right? Okay. Okay. So these are the players. These are the tables that are going to be involved. So the first thing I need to do is walk the relationships uh, between those tables. Okay. So I need um, something that. Re uh, 
orders dot something orders dot blah equals order line dot blah mm -hmm. okay and so I ask myself what is the relating um, field between orders and order line you know that they're both going to have the same order ID or in this case order num mm -hmm. okay and so this is where we're linking our tables together. That's the join clause. Okay, mm -hmm. this, is, this is an implicit join because I didn't explicitly use the word join. Okay, so that's one of them, but I've got another table to join in, so I need to put a conjunction in there, and, so join up this one to this one, and, and what else do we need? Well, we need to link up the order line table and the item table. So we're gonna have order line, and dot blah is going to equal item dot blah. And now let's think about it. What relates the order line to the item? What's well, going to be the item number? Okay. So the item number that shows up in the line line item order is going to be what links the primary key on the items table. Okay. And now that we have this piece going, and is it, oh, it's orders. Now we can come in and, and add any of the fields that we want from the, uh, the, the conglomerate of all those tables hooked together. Okay. So um, uh, we want the order num. But if you think about it, I've got, that's ambiguous because I have order num in the orders table and I have order num in the order line table. So I need to say which table. I need to disambiguate that. So mm -hmm. that's our $2 word of the day, disambiguation. Make it, make it very clear um, which one I'm talking about. So let's go get that from orders. Okay. And then um, uh, any, any field that isn't, um, doesn't appear uh, doesn't have a duplicate name in two different fields. I don't have to disambiguate it because it's it's already obvious which one I'm talking about. So order date only exists in one field. I don't have to disambiguate that. Okay. Uh, I do need to disambiguate item number. And uh, let's see, we also want the description and the category. And I think that's that's got it. And the other thing that I'll point out as we go along is let me fix this this typo here. There we go. Is that this join clause? Since we're joining on the primary to, to foreign key relationships, which are used so often, that's kind of the natural relationship we're going to use. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times it's really handy as a, a database developer uh, to sort of build one big um, join query that doesn't do any other filtering uh, other than just to get all the fields and join up all the tables. And then that becomes your base uh, template for editing whatever else you do. And so we okay. could actually just trim out, we would just paste in our standard query and cut out the, the extra tables we don't need and then come in here and re replace the select star with whatever specific fields we want. Okay. Let's go ahead and run that and see if, if we get the result we expect. Okay, so the original question said, find the number and name of each customer. Um, oh, <laughs> I did the wrong one. Um, I, I just did the, the one we, that, that you and I did together first, didn't I? Oh, that was number four. It was, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. This is actually the, 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 uh, uh, the one we were working on. I was looking at, at my notes on the wrong thing. So this is actually number four. For each order, list the order number, order date, item number, description, and category for each item that makes up the, the, the uh, order. Okay. Um, and so here we have the category, and we see the order, and we see the order number repeated broken out by category. So this order has, uh, you know, uh, pickup sticks in category GME. It has tic-tac-toe in category GME. Mm -hmm. um, uh, here's another one, 5617, has a couple different items in the toy category and so on. So it's showing us um, what it's asked for. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So I'm sorry. Now let's go on and take a look at uh, uh, at question number five. Okay, and question five in our uh, original uh, question. So here's here's five in our exercise. It says find the um, uh, ID first and last name of each customer that currently has an order on file for the item titled more songs about structures and comestibles. And here, instead of uh, the song about structures and comestibles, we're looking for the order that has rocking horses. Find the number and name of each customer. So now we're going to need to join in on our customer table. Um, find the number uh, and name of each customer. Those, the customer name and customer number come from the customer table that currently has an order. So we're going to be back over in the, the, the uh, order file and uh, looking at the order details. Um, and then the rocking horse, of course, is going to have to come from items. So we've got an extra table to join in this time, and let's go ahead and copy that in and put that in to comment out. Yep. Okay. Okay. So there's the problem we're solving. I just put it up as a comment at the, the top. And uh, uh, so let's do this one front to back. And we'll start by listing the fields that we're going to need first. And then we'll go get the, the, the table. So whether you, you figure out what tables you need and then go get the, the columns or whether you put the columns in and then figure out the, the, the tables you need from those, um, that, that kind of depends on your process. There's not like a right way or a wrong way to do this. Okay. So. <laughs> We're going to have, as always, we're going to have our select statement. We're going to have a uh, from statement, and we're going to have a where statement. Okay. And so for our select, um, we need customer dot customer number, and I got to disambiguate that one because that's going to be a linking field. That's a key field. Uh, customer name, and I don't have to say customer. Now I could. There'd be nothing wrong with qualifying that and saying customer dot customer name other than it just takes me more typing but that 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 works perfectly well uh -huh. and uh then uh uh we need our uh, uh well that's it just the, just those two right customer number and customer name find the number and name of each customer and then everything else is they're not going to actually print out the rocking horse but we need to use that as a criteria so we're using it in our logic but not in our display uh -huh. <laughs> okay. And so the tables we need to link up, um, we need a customer, which is going to link on customer uh, number. And that's going to equal um, the uh, orders customer number. Oh. I, for, I forgot. I'm in the from clause. Need to uh -huh. put tables in there. Uh, customer orders and uh, order line and item. So we got four tables at play here because the customer has the customer name and the customer number. Then we go to the orders table, which is going to store the link for the customer number on that order. Then we have to link by the order number to the order line table, which has the line items of the individual order, and that's going to link to item on um, item number. So <clears throat> it sort of makes a chain the way we link these together. Okay. Okay. So um, now we need our where clause. Customer dot customer num is going to equal um, the uh, uh, orders dot customer num. And that's the first link. Of course, I didn't spell it correctly. Let's come up here and fix the typo. Okay, now it's happy. Okay, so we've got our customer table linked in to our orders table. And now we need to um, link in our uh, orders table to our order line table. Okay. Mm 
and we're going to need another one. Oh, and again, I forgot the underscore. And then we got to link up our order line on the item num is going to link up to item num. Now that gets the join in there and this will work except we haven't really met all the criteria. We got to get the filter criteria for the rocking horse. Okay. So um, and it's item dot item num. Okay. All right, so right now we have a working query, but it's gonna give us all the orders that meet this criteria in the first part of the problem. We haven't filtered for only things that uh, are for rocking horses. So let's go ahead and add uh, the uh, description equals rocking horse. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me yeah. where the description, uh, what table does that field come from? Because I don't sure. have Sure. And, and here's a, that's a great question. Um, and so let me show you how you can check. I'm going to slide our video over here for a moment. Mm -hmm. So if I look over at the databases that I currently have online, 117, Colonial, and TAL, we're working in TAL. Okay. And if I want to refresh my memory about the data model at any time, Okay. Um, one way would be print out the, 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 the ERD, and the ERD for TAL is, is in the, the textbook. But I can also come in here and take a quick look and go, okay, uh, so I'm looking for the description. Um, I'm going to guess that maybe that's over in the item table. Okay. And if I expand that out and expand out the columns. Oh, okay. And then, aha, there's the description. Got it. <laughs> now, the other thing that can be really handy to do um, as mm -hmm. an alternative to that, we can have more than one query tab up. So we can use a new query um, right here, and we can say use tal, okay. and use our old friend uh, select star. Okay. From um, uh, this is the item table. Items. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And run that, and so there it is. Okay. But I can come back over to my other query. So I could actually run one of these select stars for each of the tables, mm -hmm. and that would give me not only the column names but it would also give me some sample data, okay. which is a great way to like double check, you know, do sanity checks on your, um, on the query we're working on. Okay. So we're not actually gonna print out Rocking Horse here. So we run this query and, uh, oh. I think you might have to put uh, item dot description because I think it doesn't know where that's coming from. Uh, we could certainly do that, but um, there should be only one field that has um, oh, description. description. Oh, I see. So that that shouldn't be the ambiguation. I've I've blown it somewhere else. Um, well, no, you were right. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's odd. Let's let's double check that. Why did it care about that? Oh, oh now it was, it was. I, I must add some other character in there that I missed. Okay. okay. Yeah. So as long as the, the, the field is unique, and it's never wrong. It is mm -hmm. never wrong to fully qualify it. It's okay. always okay to fully qualify it. Okay. That actually, you know, uh, it adds clarity, I think. Okay. Um, but so here's the thing. If I'm a student and I've just run a query and it gives me results, um, you know, if I'm a C student, like I'm done moving on to the next, uh, next question. Mm -hmm. If I'm a, if I'm a B student, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to look it over and logically check it. But if I'm an A student, I'm going to go the distance and go, you know, I really want to see that that has a rocking horse in it. Now mm -hmm. I know my final answer that I turn in needs to not give extra pieces. Mm -hmm. What if I just went up here and said, um, you know, give me the description. Oh, okay. As well. So okay. let's run that. Ah, okay. now I feel much more comfortable that I actually, my logic is working. And now that I've got that, I'll just come up here, drop the, the uh, extra field that wasn't asked for. Okay. And I feel very comfortable that we really did uh, answer the question correctly. All right. 
So the other thing that can be very confusing to students that are um, new to SQL databases, and of course we kind of expect everybody in this class is going to be new to SQL databases, is students will sometimes um, give me a query and they'll say, and I'll mark it wrong, and they'll say, but Professor Beck, it gave the, the, the right data. And I'll say, well, that's because you happen to have the, um, the, the, the a query that was working on the database that you have, the data that you have happened to work. So for example, if I happen to say, um, let's say that, that some field is going to be greater than uh, 17 and uh, it's going to be less than um, uh, 20. And I mark that query wrong and I say, you know, it really should have been X is greater than or equal to 17 and X is less than or equal to 20. And they'll say, well, but it gave me the same answer either way. And so you can see that if none of the, the values happen to be exactly 17 and exactly 20 in the database, that you would get the same result um, by luck in that circumstance, but that if um, data is going to change over time, you can't rely on your specialized knowledge of the data set you're working with to, to write a query, query that is not logically correct and just say, well, it, it's never going to be that way. My query doesn't have to implement that logic. We always write the queries with the assumption that the data is going to change over time and that the logic needs to be airtight on that. So that's, that's just... Uh, uh, worth mention, something that we often run into. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at uh, our next question. So we're uh, looking at question number um, six now mm -hmm. in the exercises. And question number six says list the item ID, title, and artist for each pair of items that have the same artist. For example, one such pair would be item five and item eight because the artist is for both items is, is Burt Ruggles. So when we say pair, this is sort of something that they're artificially having us pair these things up. It's not that there's some natural pairing and that, that kind of takes some wrapping your head around. Um, but they, they want to do a little bit of a correlation here um, with all the things for each artist. Well, the parallel exercise for that is number 12. It says list the item number, description, and category for each pair of items that are in the same category. For example, one such pair would be item CD33 and item DL51 because the category for both items is toy. And this might be one of those where we would like to go look at a select star on the, on the items database to kind of get a feel for what we're talking about. So let's copy that in as we've been doing. Um, and make a comment on there. As a matter of fact, I'm going to wrap this around so that we can see it <clears throat> by making a series of comments. Okay, so let's let's do that for just a second and see CD33 and DL51. Um, so let's come over here and uh, uh, there's DL51 and. Uh, uh, the other one it was looking at was what, CL53? DL51 and CD33. CD33, DL51. And we say, okay, both of those are in the toy category. And so those are going to come out as, as a pairing. Now, here's the thing that we're going to have to deal with. Um, we could come out with two possible pairings, one with CD33 first and then DL51, and then we could have the other combination of pairing is DL51 first and CD33. So wow, how are we going to keep our query from um, returning what are es essentially the same pairs but in different order? And uh, so that's going to be something we're going to have to wrap our heads around. Um, let's start looking at the uh, um, it just what we're going to do to get this um, out. So let's let's we ha may not have, have completely figured it out as yet, um, but let's start looking at what uh, what fields we need. Now we're actually selecting the same field twice from the same table. We've never seen how to do that. 
and that's why we do these uh, hangouts, is that there is a way to do it. What we'd like to do, in essence, is we'd like to say, uh, select the item number and the description of the first item, and then we'd actually like the item number and the description for the second number, and that's going to come from the um, item table. Well, the problem is we'd really like to be able to treat these as if they're coming from two separate tables, right? Because this, if I just do it this way, if it allowed me to do it, it's going to show the query with the same item twice. It's not going to give us a pairing. If, these, if, if the items were really broken into two separate tables, then it would be no problem. I would just use the table name, okay? Well, let's say that, that uh, I do have two tables, and uh, from item, um, and we're going to give him an alias name. First, and item, second. So we have a first table and a second table. Mm -hmm. And now, this is a nickname. It's a moniker or an alias for the table. Okay. Um, and you know what? I'm pretty lazy. I don't like to have to type F-I-R-S-T each time. So I'm just going to say as F, okay. and second will be S. Okay. okay. So now I can say, well, go get F dot item num and go get F dot description and then go get second. So we're treating it as if it's two separate tables, even though it's the same table, and we can do that by aliasing them. Okay. Okay. And why are you not loving me yet? Multi-part identifier could not be bound. I haven't got it bound yet. Oh. The extra comma. Um. And then let's add our where clause. And now, since we've broken the model into thinking about it as if it was two totally separate tables, now it's really easy to solve the rest of our problems because we can add our where clause and say uh, where f dot category is equal to s dot category. And we just did something really kind of amazing. We just did a self join. Okay. And I see now why I've got the error on from. I got a trailing comma up there. Now it's happy. Okay, so now I've done a self-join on that table. I've joined the table to itself. And you're like, well, can you do that? And the answer is, well, why not? It, you mm -hmm. know, you can join any table to any table. But that's where the magic happens. And then um, now we need additional conditions. So we want to do this, because right now we've got the, 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 the join and we have both pairs you know, pair A, B, and pair B, A. Um, so how can we take care of that? What if we would say, it has, if we order them, and we say, and uh, F dot item num is, uh, and this could be greater than or equal, uh, or less than. Let's, let's make it uh, uh, less than. And uh, we haven't put them in order yet, but let's see, is this, is this working? Let's just try it so far. Okay. So I'm getting pairs of item number 874 patients, pairs with item number BR23 Skittles. And now we need to make sure that things are in the proper order. So let's come up. We've done a little sanity check and see that working. And let's add uh, order by, and let's make our, our uh, uh, major sort key uh, category. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, our secondary sort key, uh, first item num, and then our, our tertiary sort key, S dot item num.
and category is ambiguous. All right. And so now it's nicely ordered and we see our pairs. Mm -hmm. and is it true that we have, have the pairs going only one direction so we aren't duplicated? Patients to Skittles, AH74. So we shouldn't see AH74 to BR23 reversed as BR23 to AH24 anywhere. BR23 and BR23, and I'm not seeing it reversed to AH74. So that means that this piece is working for us. Nice. Kind of a weird analysis to do. I think the probably the most important thing was to do to show that the, a, a table can be joined to itself. Okay. So, another example of when you might have a table joining it to it to itself. Let's say that we were talking about a uh, a table that have that has uh, your your college catalog. Some courses have to be taken as prerequisites to other courses, and so. Um, they're both coming out of the same table, but one is listed as a prerequisite to the other. So if we wanted to try and get an order of what, what uh, classes I need to take in what order, and they're all coming out of the same table, I would join the table to itself, and I would look for the, um, you know, for many uh, courses that don't have a prerequisite, that prerequisite field would be null. And when I have a prerequisite, it would have the course number. Uh, of the, the prerequisite tables or prerequisite uh, class. And so I could use this same trick here to get an ordering of first you take this class, then you take this other class, then you take this other class that requires both of those as a prerequisite class. And so we can use that kind of, of self-join trick um, in a lot of ways. It's actually fairly common to join a table to itself. Okay. All right. Are we good uh, going in, in, in order? Um, you want to hit the, the, the next one? Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. And I'm kind of, uh, again, I'm kind of driving here, but um, the Hangout is really your time and your stuff. So if you want to see something different um, uh, or have different questions or interests, um, you know, this is not a, a set lecture. So um, okay. we, can, we can look at anything you're interested in as well. Yeah, I, I didn't have anything else because that's... That's, I, I just got started on assignment four, so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we got about um, five more minutes, so let's do um, another one of these. Um, okay. And I can add uh, additional videos in the week if anybody has questions and wants to see parallel problems. I'm happy to, to work parallel problems on all of these, these exercises. And I do try and uh, select a, a, a variation of the uh, exercises that we do. So we, we do um, apply different techniques. Every couple problems, there's a new twist um, that I try and bring in. All right, so let's take a look at what the next parallel problem is after 12. So that was, uh, TAL 12 is parallel to assignment exercise 6, uh, then assignment exercise 7 is parallel to TAL 13. And uh, exercise 7 says, list the order ID and order date for each order placed by the customer name Yash Randall. So up until we get that twist on uh, Yash Randall, it's really just going to be a join, right? So again, we're starting with a base join. Number 13 says, list the order number and order date for each order placed by the customer uh, named Johnson's Department Store. And here's a twist. We have an embedded single quote, but the single quote is actually what we use to denote a string in, um, uh, uh, in, in SQL, uh, in the transact SQL language. And so we need to find a way to, how do we escape uh, we use what they call escapement to make sure that it's a quoted quote, as it were. And it tells us the hint is to enter an apostrophe uh, as a single quotation mark within a string of, of characters, type two single quotation marks in a row. So a, a quote of a quote comes down to being interpreted as a quote. And that sounds strange. It'll make more sense when we actually see it. So let's uh, come back, uh, back in and let's paste in the the problem. And let me just break this up so it's a little bit easier to, oh, forget I'm not in a programming language. I'm in SQL and comments are double dashes. Oh, 
All right. So, I'm going to cheat a little bit in the interest of time. Mm -hmm. Those are the fields that we're interested in selecting. And again, I fully qualified orders dot order num because that's my key field. I have to disambiguate it. And then the two tables that I'm going to grab here are customer and orders. And here's the join part of our where clause. But then we also need to add that additional clause. As a matter of fact, we should at this point be able to run this much of the query, mm -hmm. but it's going to give us results for, for everybody, not just for um, uh, Johnson's department store. But let's do a sanity check. Sometimes it's good to, to go incrementally as you go along. and Okay, so I'm getting lots of stuff, and it's for more than just um, Johnson's department store. And again, let's make it easier to see that. Let's go ahead and, uh, and put the customer name out there temporarily. So I see that Johnson's department store is among them, but there's also all these others. So now it's very much easier for me anyway to see that uh, the filter I want is uh, customer name equals Johnson. And here's the trick for quoting a quote, two of them in a row. And that is not a double quote. That is two single quotes in a row. Okay. Department store in the single quote. And let's run that. Oh. I think you forgot the S. I did. Yeah. That's why I got nothing back. <laughs> and uh, John, so I'm getting just the one. And again, the original requirement was not to put the actual customer name in there, just to, to provide the order number and order date for it. And there we go. And we're right at 1045. Okay. So um, I have another um, hangout starting for another one of my classes in about 15 minutes. So I'm going to wrap up here. But if okay. there's any questions that you have, um, I'm happy to answer them. And uh, um, uh, we can look at, at anything in a hangout that's related to the course, not just the current assignment. Uh, if there's any questions about any of the prior materials or anything else. Uh, no, I don't have any questions. Okay. All right. Are we, we off to a good start then with the, the parallel queries? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, again, in a, in a hangout, I'm happy to uh, um, address any aspect, any question about the, the course, not just the, the exercises or what I, what I bring to the hangout. I always have an agenda so that if people don't have questions, I'll have something to show. But this is really your time. And I appreciate your joining me today. Um, I know Saturdays is not a, necessarily a great time, but uh, mm -hmm. for an online course, there just never is a, a good time for all of us to get together. So we'll put the recording out there, and if other people can benefit from it, then that's all to the good. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.